913 years ago, when the gods ruled the world, the most powerful of them was the Yun clan. But a bloody demon of the north appeared from the darkness, seeking to destroy their rule. The demons, under the leadership of their master, began a brutal war against the gods, sparing no one in their path. The Yun clan did not lose hope and gave their lives to protect their world. Oliver, the only heir of the clan, was hidden in the human dimension where no one could find him. But one day, he will return to take revenge on the demons and restore the glory of his clan. In the north of the Divine Realm, where the gods lived, there was the majestic Yun clan, guarding an ancient treasure that gave them incredible strength and wisdom. Other powers found out about this treasure and wanted to seize it for their own purposes. The Yun clan did not give up without a fight and repelled all the attacks of their enemies. But one night, something unexpected happened. A demon army, led by a blood demon of the north, had infiltrated the Yun clan. They had one goal, to take possession of the great treasure of the clan, which was hidden in their temple. The demon lord, who had the appearance of a terrifying creature, radiated a terrifying energy that made even the gods tremble. He broke through to the head of the clan and faced him in a duel to the death. The demon was invincible, while Head Yun was powerless. Chained to the ground, he felt the power of the gods leave his body. The leader and his subjects were crushed. The Yun clan disappeared from the face of the divine realm. While the adults gave their lives, the children hid in the cave, together with the elder Myron. The children cried for their parents. Some even wanted to go out and help the adults, but the elder did not allow them. Suddenly, the elder sensed a demonic energy approaching them. He protected the children with his power, creating a sphere of light around them. But the elder was fatally attacked at that time. He gathered all his energy with the last of his strength, directed it to the children, and sacrificed his life to send them to the human world. They will be able to be reborn and raise the Yun clan among the gods. In an unknown place, the young man did not understand what had happened. Lauren, never separate and protect the princess for me, someone shouted to the boy. Who are all these people? cried the young man, looking at the strange memories. When he woke up, he realized that this was one of his night terrors. I wonder if those dreams are real, thought the boy, because he had a mother, father, uncle, and a beautiful bride in them. Following the carriage, he tried to remember her name. Suddenly, his friend Chris came up to him. Simon's friend managed to get something incredible. Miss Sydney's yellow panties! You better do something useful, shouted Simon and threw them away. Not wanting to do such things, Simon made up an excuse and asked his friend to go with him to the riverbank. He knew that girls bathed there in the evenings and hoped that they would be able to spy on them. The boys were in the service of a noble lady, and sitting by the fire, they exchanged impressions. Suddenly, a girl appeared behind Simon, exclaiming, Oh my God, you're here! Simon turned to see that it was one of the lady's friends. Lady Sydney wants to talk to you, she said. Simon wondered why he had been called so late at night but decided not to mind. What happened? He asked, getting into the carriage. It was stuffy in the carriage, and the lady was dressed in warm clothes. Aren't you hot? Asked the boy, trying to relieve the tension. He felt uncomfortable. Sitting in a carriage with an unmarried young lady, he was all red and didn't know where to look. Suddenly, the lady pushed the boy to the floor of the carriage. She began to search his body as if looking for something. Where is he? Where is the magic cauldron? She shouted. Simon didn't understand what she was talking about and thought she was crazy. But then he realized that there might be his chance to take the opportunity to kiss the lady. What are you doing? Shouted the girl and slapped the boy in the face. I demand that you give me the treasure of the Yun clan, she said angrily. Without waiting for an answer, the lady pushed the boy out of the carriage. Lady beat someone up again. Laughter and mockery was heard from the other guards. Simon got up and walked away from the carriage, not understanding why the lady was so angry with him. And the biggest mystery he couldn't solve, why did the lady call him Oliver? The boy remembered that in his dreams, he was also called Oliver and asked to protect the treasure of the Yun clan. The god of war battle cauldron that bestows limitless power was hidden within his soul. Having calmed down, the boy quickly fell asleep, not suspecting any danger. Simon was suddenly woken up by unknown boys in masks, who grabbed him and dragged him somewhere. The strangers were warriors from the guild who had captured the boy for breaking their rules. The head of his guild found out about this and hurried to the soldiers. The boys were tied and brought out in front of the head and the girls. Simon's friend tried to buy time and began to claim that one of the girls was his sister. 
The girl did not believe him because she remembers how he spied on her while she was bathing, and the headman got angry and began to threaten them. To convince her, Chris talked about the family on his back that they have since birth, and how they were separated when they were children due to the war. The girl doubted when the chairman asked how they knew that the girls would bathe in the river. It turned out that it was Simon who told Chris to distract him from his boring work. The main character quickly made up a story that he is in love with the same girl he calls Sister Chris. The girl was ashamed and fellow guards began to laugh at him, calling him a traitorous brother. But suddenly, a magic arrow flew into the company from behind the bushes and whistled over their heads. They quickly dodged and saw that many more arrows were flying in the air. Mountain bandits attacked them, wanting to get their treasure. The bandits wanted to kill the guards and kidnap Lady Sydney, who was the daughter of a rich lord. Simon decided this was a chance to escape and whispered to Chris, Get out of here while we still can! But how to run with your hands tied? asked Chris. Simon saw that one of the killed bandits was holding an axe in his hands. He quickly grabbed him and cut his handcuffs. He then helped Chris, who flinched as Simon suddenly cut the rope on his back. The boys decided to take advantage of the chaos and run away. But Chris noticed something in the bushes. There was a beautiful girl hiding there whom they did not know. The girl begged them not to kill her, but Chris had another plan. He thought they could take her hostage and force the bandits to back off. Wasting no time, Chris jumped out of the bushes and grabbed the girl. Stop! He shouted to the bandits, holding the girl by the throat. Or I'll kill her! He continued, trying to look threatening. The bandits began to laugh. She is also our hostage, but we will get her back soon. They ignored Chris and charged at him and the girl. They were saved by Simon, who pushed them away from himself and the girl. He told Chris, jump off the cliff, I'll distract them. Chris wobbled and the hostage girl got out of his arms and ran away. And Simon couldn't stand it and pushed Chris down. The main character was caught by one of the bandits, who threw a mace at him with great force. The mace hit the ground nearby and Simon felt everything shake beneath him. The boy did not give up and gathered all his strength to run to the bandit. He tried to attack the thug from behind, hoping to surprise him. But the bandit didn't move and easily deflected the blow, and Simon panicked, feeling that the bandit was much stronger than him. The thug punched the boy in the stomach so hard that he flew back and fell to the ground, coughing up blood. At this moment, Simon suddenly remembered everything. His real name was from the Yun clan, which guarded the war cauldron of the God of War, and his bride was Lady Sydney, one of the immortals. Having returned his lost memories, Simon felt a treasure awaken in his soul, a war cauldron that gave him incredible strength. The bandits did not understand what had happened. They saw how Simon rose from the ground, and golden energy began to emanate from his body. The boy ran at the robbers. He attacked a thug who wanted to kill him. He then took out another thug who sneaked up behind him. Bandits ran from Simon and shouted, Monster! Monster! They were afraid of his strength and did not want to join the battle. But Simon didn't want to give them any chance and chased after them with no intention of stopping. He destroyed all the bandits, leaving no one behind, sparing no one. At the same time, in the forest, Chris was being chased by robbers who did not want to lose their prey. He was no match for Simon in strength, and he also unhappily tripped over a tree root sticking out of the ground. This is the end, thought Chris, seeing how the bandit approached him with a sword in his hand. The bandit swung his sword ominously preparing to deliver the fatal blow. Chris shouted, Simon, help! Simon heard Chris's scream and ran to help, but it was too late. The bandit had already pierced Chris's chest with a sword. Simon attacked the thief with the devil in his eyes, but he managed to jump aside. The bandit smiled evilly and said to Simon, You're next! Simon did not listen to him, but only attacked him with all the power of his treasure, as it gives him incredible power. But the robber was also not simple and defended himself from all Simon's blows. But Simon was faster and more agile. He found a weak spot in the bandit's defense and broke through. The guy approached the bandit who fell to the ground because he wanted to take revenge for the death of his friend. You will not kill me. I am from a great clan. The robber was frightened seeing how Simon raised the sword above his head. I'll remember that, Simon said coldly. He destroyed the robber, avenging the death of his friend. The hero had grief in his soul, and as if in response to his pain, rain poured down from the sky. The boy made a grave for his friend and reproached himself that he was not strong enough to save him. I will become stronger and take revenge for you. I promise my real name, 
in the name of Oliver of the Yoon clan, he swore, looking at the sky. Simon took a step back and added with a smile, You never got married. Don't worry, bro. I'll find myself a couple of wives. Meanwhile, Lady Sydney came across the boy and started mocking him, saying that he couldn't do anything without spiritual power. The guy was offended and called the girl arrogant, not understanding how he could love her in the divine world. The girl realized that the boy had regained his memory and began to reproach him for his weakness. When he found himself in the human world, his soul merged with his body and he became an ordinary mortal. Thus, the engagement is off. Simon waved it off and said he didn't care. Then the girl was about to leave, but noticed something about the boy. This is a war cauldron, she exclaimed and rushed to take him away. Simon managed to push the girl away. To show that he has no treasure, he decided to undress, which embarrassed the girl. The battle cauldron is a very valuable thing. If it is found, a new war can start, said the girl and left. And finally, she added that she no longer wanted to see him. The guy replied the same. If I had spiritual power, you wouldn't have dared to talk to me like that, he said to her in parting. The boy took one last look at his friend's grave and left. He returned to his guild's camp in the Imperial City. The boy was meditating at home, trying to understand why his spiritual power had disappeared and his memory had only now awakened. After long training with the cauldron, he realized that he could quickly increase his strength, and if he was filled with the energy of the five elements, he could reach a new level. In his world, people use spiritual energy to strengthen their strength. In the heart, they have a point where it is concentrated. In the same way, monsters increase their strength, and if you extract an internal element from them, you can quickly raise your level by creating an elixir. He needs elixirs from the strongest monsters, a fire bear from Lava Mountain, a snow monkey from Ice Peak, a bull demon from the rainforest, and a purple python from the Black Sea. Simon was still too weak to hunt monsters for elixirs. It would be tantamount to suicide. And buying them is also not an option. They cost unreal money. Going out into the yard, the boy made a promise to himself. I will succeed even without this. A girl whom he used to spy on ran up to him and declared that he was in love with her and she was glad to see him. We haven't seen each other for a few days. Did you miss me? Asked the boy. That girl had a question for him. Is it true that Colin was my brother? I'm sorry we told you a lie because we were afraid of being punished for spying, the boy admitted. Colin is dead, so don't be angry with him, asked Simon. 149 inches and you. You said you liked me, was that true? Asked the girl. Simon could not deceive the girl, so he told the truth. No, I lied too. The girl was upset. She should not have asked such a question. And the boy, meanwhile, decided to take advantage of the situation because the girl was guarding the alchemical substances in the warehouse. The guy asked the girl to show him the warehouse because he had never been there. He promised not to touch anything with his hands. And the girl warned that if something disappeared, they would be killed. The boy agreed to be careful, but as soon as he entered the vault, he began to feel everything with his hands. The girl showed him two monster essences, the commander's most valuable treasure. They cost a lot of money, so they cannot be sold. In the vault, there was an elixir of gold, which can only be obtained from monsters that have a high concentration of spiritual energy. Simon extracted the essence from the girl, asking, Is it true that she helps in cultivation? Yes, but you need to turn the essence of the monsters into an elixir. She answered, but suddenly something happened. The cauldron hidden in the boy's soul began to tremble. The battle cauldron absorbed the monster's essence energy invisibly, leaving no trace behind. Unbelievable. With this ability, cultivation will be extremely fast, thought the boy enthusiastically. He returned the monster's golden essence to the girl as if nothing had happened. The boy was interested in the monster's other water essence. He knew that a person could only use one type of elemental energy at a time, but what would happen if he used the battle cauldron? Simon decided not to hesitate because the coward will not succeed. You just have to try. The boy succeeded in everything. He was so happy that he surprised the girl, who did not suspect anything. I'm just happy to see such incredible things. Thank you, the boy thanked. If I can get more monster essence, I can quickly raise my rank to eight, Simon decided. After talking with the girl, the boy learned that you can get any essences of monsters at the auction. After leaving the warehouse, the couple walked around the area. The girl asked to be called by her first name, Isabel. Their colleagues came to meet the boy and girl. The military unit needs help. Why aren't you doing anything? 
shouted a young man of their age. In front of Simon was Logan, the leader of the young generation of the mercenary guild, who had level 8 strength and was in love with Isabel. But the girl refused to meet him. Isabel hid behind Simon. She was clearly not comfortable. The guy decided to protect the girl and said that they are now a couple, greatly annoying Logan. Simon challenged his opponent to a fight, saying that he should not be so furious, he should calm down. Logan immediately rushed at Simon with a sword, but Isabel stood in his way, which caused their colleagues to mock him. Simon agreed to fight for the girl, and Logan decided to counterattack his opponent with a sword. The guys began to verbally abuse each other and agreed to fight in three months at the official certification of mercenaries so that everyone could see their massacre. Logan agreed to this, saying that he would definitely win and humiliate his opponent. Simon just smiled at this and walked away with the girl. I will not leave a living place from you. I will beat you in front of everyone. Logan shouted after them. The couple stopped by the riverbank and the girl, frightened, said that Simon would not win. The boy said that he would win and asked why the girl refused Logan, because he is one of the strongest in the guild. The girl said that Logan runs after every skirt and even forces the girls into relationships. Simon reassured the girl, assuring that he would definitely win. The girl did not believe him, but asked not to die. Embarrassed, she added, You saw my body when you were spying, and you must take responsibility for it. Simon, walking down the main street of the city, where everything was so expensive that he had to spend all his savings to buy new clothes, as much as $30. Simon did not understand how it is possible to live here when they ask a lot of money for an ordinary shirt, but he was distracted from his thoughts when he noticed a familiar girl walking towards him. It was Sydney with whom the last meeting did not go well. Now they were more enemies than the young people they were betrothed to in the divine realm. The girl smiled at Simon and offered him to walk around the shops together as if they were still together. Sydney had wanted to buy a new handbag for a long time, but she could not find a suitable one. She hoped that Simon would help her choose one, but he did not understand why the girl approached him and said, I am not Oliver from the Divine Realm anymore. I'm Simon, a simple guy from the human world. Someone was watching their loud argument. It was Mr. Victor, one of the most influential people in the city who had an elegant appearance and held a fan in his hand, behind which he hid his smile. Mr. Victor was very happy to see Lady Sydney, with whom he had long been in love, so he went over and greeted Sydney politely, ignoring Simon. Lady Sydney pretended that Simon was her husband, who greatly offended the girl with his words, about which she complained to Master Victor, hoping that he would protect her. Victor was very surprised that the lady had a husband, but did not interfere in their family affairs. Master Victor gave Sidney a welcome gift, the fiery essence of the monster, which he obtained after his last expedition. He said that it symbolizes his good relationship with the girl and her family. Sidney was surprised by the generosity of Master Victor, who was the commander-in-chief of the mercenary forces. Fire monster essences were very valuable and rare, but for that, they were ordinary things, because just recently, his group sold as many as 16 monster essences of the highest quality, each of which was a 7th, 8th level, which brought them a lot of money. Sidney replied, Mr. Victor, you are very generous, kind and solid, but I have my husband by my side, and I can't possibly date anyone else. With these words, she made Master Victor very angry who did not believe that Sidney really loved Simon. Master Victor's anger was directed at the boy, so he offered the girl to deal with him and teach the loser, challenging Simon to a duel in honor of Lady Sidney. The girl agreed, hoping that Simon would back down and admit his mistake. Simon was surprised by Sidney's senseless act. Is this how she thought to deal with me? He thought, and told Mr. Victor about it adding that he would not be able to compete with him either in strength or in mind because they belong to different worlds. So Simon simply suggested that he take Sydney for himself because he doesn't want anything to do with her anymore, causing Victor to laugh and agree to the offer because he believed that Sydney was only worth his love. Simon joked a little more and warned Master Victor that he would need a lot of energy at night because Sydney is very picky and sometimes staying up all night can be bad for your health, so you have to be careful. After this conversation, 
the boys immediately understood each other, not suspecting that they had made the girl very angry. Victor already wanted to catch Sydney, but she pushed him away with her energy. The man hit hard and was no longer so kind, but ordered his men to seize the girl. A bunch of soldiers attacked Sydney, but she was ready for it, radiating her spiritual energy. The girl quickly dealt with all the soldiers, cutting them with her sharp sword. And soon she immediately attacked Victor, whom she now considered her main enemy. The girl seriously hurt him, hitting him in the stomach, which caused him to fall to the ground, causing horror among all the soldiers. She killed Mistress Victor, cried the soldiers with hatred in their eyes. For him, shouted one of them and rushed at the girl. For Victor, picked up the others and followed him. But Sydney was not afraid of the soldiers. If they wanted to die, they could come, because the girl used the spraying technique, destroying everything in her path. The soldiers had no chance to resist such a force, because with her energy, the girl created invisible bonds that wrapped the soldiers and squeezed them to death. Then with her power, she scattered the bodies of the soldiers all over the street. While the soldiers unsuccessfully fled from Sydney, Simon decided to take advantage of the situation, so he went to the monster pellets that were lying unattended and quickly stuffed them into his pockets. Having dealt with the soldiers, Sydney approached the boy. She was covered in blood, but her eyes burned with anger. You trampled my reputation in the mud, Oliver. I'll kill you, the girl shouted and attacked the boy with a sword. Simon retreated from her, trying to avoid her blows because he did not want to fight with her, but she did not give him peace. Simon didn't want to fight Sydney, so he just ran away using his energy, which allowed him to move faster and jump higher. The girl chased the boy while they were running on the roofs of houses, but Simon was innocent. Sydney was the first to touch him, but she didn't want to admit it. People were very surprised when they saw a guy and a girl jumping on the roofs, and if no one knew Simon, then Sydney was a famous lady who didn't like to behave like that, so she fell behind the guy. The boy was further and further away from the girl who was throwing threats at his back. He felt relieved when he moved away from her, because he did not want to have anything to do with Sydney. Simon finally made it to the auction house where he could sell the monster essence he stole. The Chen clan's auction house was famous for its grandeur and reliability, and even among the multitude of buyers and sellers, there had never been any complaints, so Simon decided to take advantage of this opportunity. The mayor of the city, who belonged to the Chen clan, was known for his justice and honesty, so Simon wanted to try to bite him and show him the essence of the monster. Simon was met by a treasure appraiser who examined his essence and said it was level 5 and worth only $16. It's not fair, shouted Simon. You bought 15 of these pellets from mercenary troops for $100 each. The boy was indignant. The appraiser claimed that those pellets were level 7 and Simon was selling him a low-grade product, to which Simon replied that he just didn't understand pellets and was mistaken due to his old age. The assessor began to threaten Simon, who replied that he was only a good citizen who could not remain silent when he saw injustice, and therefore he wanted to expose his mistake, and added that the assessor was old and could not understand the essence level. The old man was enraged. He had worked in this case for many years and had an impeccable reputation. How could such a young man suspect him of deception? Simon and the appraiser agreed to settle their dispute officially, in the main square, in front of everyone present, as well as the mayor of the city and the elders of the Chen clan. Everything was going according to Simon's plan, and soon they were visited by a beautiful woman who was the mayor of the town. She was angry that her auction house was in trouble. Oh, it's Alex. I thought it was a man, Simon thought when the mayor turned to him and asked him to explain the situation, and especially about the forgery and how it could have gotten into her auction house. Simon replied that he doesn't call the monster essences fake, but only says that they are low level, but mistaken for high level. So he is not afraid of the consequences and is willing to put his life on the line to prove his truth. Alex did not believe Simon, because in her auction house there was always order and honesty. Only the most qualified appraisers worked here, who were never wrong, so the only way to resolve the conflict was to do it publicly. While searching for the same monster essences that the mercenaries brought, some time passed. When the monster pellets were brought in, the mayor told Simon to test them, and Simon again stressed that he wanted to do it in public, because how could such a respectable person be afraid of the truth? 
The mayor was indignant and agreed to a public dispute because this is not the first time that someone has tried to spoil her reputation. She is ready for a challenge. A gong sounded throughout the square of the auction house, announcing the beginning of the examination of the monster pellets that had been sold by the group of fire mercenaries a few days ago. Simon was very pleased with this turn of events, and together with the mayor, he stood on the stage in front of a crowd of people and prepared for an argument. The crowd was whispering. People trusted a group of mercenaries more than some stranger. The mayor addressed the crowd and urged them not to judge the competition hastily, as the Chen clan's auction house had always maintained high standards, and if the young man in front of her was proven right, they would not shirk their responsibilities. Simon supported her words and said that if he is wrong, he will give all his monster essences to the auction house, and they can do whatever they want with it. However, Simon added, what would happen if it turned out that the monster pellets really were of poor quality? The mayor answered him that if at least one of the monster pellets was of the fifth level, she would personally apologize to all the townspeople, and the young man could choose any treasure from the auction house as compensation. The young man agreed to these conditions, but added that the judges should be not only employees of the auction house, but also honorable citizens of this city. The old appraiser and the mayor of the city agreed to these conditions, and added that there had not been such a scandal in the city for a long time. The chief elder of the Chen clan came onto the stage and offered to conduct an evaluation of the monster's essences himself. Simon began to worry that the elder might foil his plan while he was already working on checking the essences of the monsters. The elder quickly checked the essences and announced that four of them were ninth level, six were eighth level, and five were seventh level. Thus, all 15 monster pellets were of high quality, confirming the reputation of the auction house. After the assessment, the elder approached the young man and said, Now it's your turn. Show what you can do. Simon, on the other hand, declared that these were fakes, and taking one pellet, showed that it was covered with a thin layer of elixir, which increases its level, and the elder did not notice this during the evaluation. The elder laughed and said that this was the biggest lie he had ever heard, and added, Words won't prove anything. Action must be taken. While Simon concentrated on the pellets, he was sure of his secret. The war cauldron could absorb part of the energy and reduce the quality of the granules. All eyes were fixed on the boy who was invisibly absorbing some of the energy from the monster's essence. After 10 minutes, Simon finished his manipulation and asked the judges to check the essence level. The judges were amazed. They could not believe that this was really possible. The mayor and elder of the Chen clan felt the worst. They couldn't understand how the essence could drop to the fifth level. The crowd roared. Not only the judges were surprised, but the mayor admitted his mistake and added that their auction house has been operating for over a hundred years and has always had a good name. And if they were wrong, they are ready to admit it. She asked to continue the inspection and draw conclusions at the end. Simon did not waste time and said that the fight for justice is his goal, and quickly approaching the essence of the monsters, he absorbed a part of them, making them all fifth level. The elder and the mayor were still in shock. While Simon was very pleased, he cheated the auction house in front of everyone and no one knew about it. People noticed that the color of the essence had darkened, and not knowing about Simon's special abilities, believed that these were fakes. The elder was surprised by the new method of deception, and the mayor was very worried about the reputation of his auction house and clan. The mayor asked the boy to test another special essence, while the young man advertised himself. You can find me among the mercenary army of the storm group. I am willing to test your essence for free. The essence was brought, and when the boy looked at it, he could not believe his eyes. This is the essence of the immortal monster of extraordinary power, the boy was surprised, confirming his abilities in front of the mayor. The guy understood that the mayor wanted to set him up. Such an essence was very valuable, and even the most skilled appraiser could make a mistake in determining its level. But he decided to play along with her. Congratulations, Miss Oleksandra. This essence is real, he said. The boy wasted no time and reminded the mayor that she had promised him any treasure from the auction house as an apology. So he chose this essence. The mayor and the elder were enraged by the boy's trick. Mayor of the city, Mrs. Oleksandra could not refuse her words, especially when there were so many witnesses, so she gave the essence to the boy. 
Simon, saying that he would always be happy to assess the level of essences, left the square, jumping high up and quickly disappearing from sight. Simon was already far away and did not hear how the mayor gave an order to a military man to gather an army and surround the storm group to punish the guy who ruined her reputation. After some time, a large crowd stood near the territory of the storm group, while the boy hid, waiting to see what would happen next. The head of the military mercenaries, Fire, Eden stood with a crowd of soldiers and demanded that Simon be handed over to him. Mercenary leader Leon was Simon's supervisor and stood up for the boy, telling Eden not to jump to conclusions. Head Eden was furious. Your mercenary and daughter Sydney killed Victor, my son, right in the middle of the street. Give up their protection right now and hand them over to me. Logan, who was standing next to the head of the mercenaries, suggested that he question the mercenary that was giving them trouble. But unfortunately, they didn't know who it was. There were a lot of people, and now everyone was in place except for Simon. Isabel began to defend the boy, making up a story about him getting stuck in the toilet. The head did not believe this and ordered to quickly find the boy and bring him to him. Isabel was already starting to worry about Simon. But suddenly, everyone heard some noises. Someone was running towards them at high speed. Head! Head! shouted Simon, who was covered in bruises and wounds. The head wondered where the boy came from so beaten. The boy had already hid behind his head and began to complain. Your daughter, Lady Sydney, was abused. The boy's words caused shock and disbelief in everyone present. Simon began to babble, making up a story as he went to get out of the mess. Lady Sydney and I were walking around the shops when we suddenly came across Victor, who was flirting with the lady. She could not withstand his attacks and struck him with her sword before running away. I have no idea where she is now, but I hope she didn't hurt herself because of this. Simon lied with tears in his eyes. Chairman Leon believed Simon's words because he had not seen his daughter for a whole day. Enraged by such an insult to his daughter, the head of Leon wanted to punish Eden and his entire family, therefore concentrating all his spiritual potential in the sword, rushed at him. A fierce battle between the two heads began. The ground crumbled under their blows, and a terrible energy filled the air. The battle continued without interruption. The opponents had no intention of retreating or conceding victory. The swords, glowing with spiritual energy, collided in a decisive confrontation, causing a huge explosion. Isabel also wanted to join the battle to avenge Lady Sydney, but Simon held her back. Simon told her not to be so naive and told Isabel the truth about what happened. Sydney was alive. He just lied to save his life. Simon continued, Sydney left town and went on a trip, and he lied because he was afraid he would be killed. Isabel was disappointed by the boy's bad behavior, but agreed to remain silent. Suddenly, someone intervened in the head duel. It was Mrs. Alexandra who looked angry and was approaching them. Mr. Eden, you must explain everything well to me, said the woman angrily. Her auction house was disgraced in front of the whole town because of the essences that Chairman Eden sold her, so she took it with her and left. Chief Leon asked Simon if he was telling the truth to which the young man just nodded, adding that he didn't know where Sydney was now, while the chief was already giving orders to find his daughter. Chairman Leon ordered a search of the entire city, but Sydney was unreachable because she had already fled from there. At the same time, our main character took advantage of this opportunity and went to the mountains with Isabel for training. Isabel was worried about the boy. He was doing a thousand pull-ups every day and he was doing the same today. Stopping. The boy realized that he had reached the fifth level of body purification, but he did not stop there. 301, he climbed the mountain, ran all over the forest. Then he practiced blows by breaking the stone into pieces. After all this training, the boy stood gathering his energy. He had reached the sixth level of body purification through his hard training. So in the evening, after hard training, he sat by the fire. Isabel cooked a delicious roast pork. The girl asked the boy why he trained so hard. The young man remembered Chris, his dead friend, but answered differently. It is because he is weak and wants to become strong, not to lose to anyone anymore. The guy quickly changed the topic of conversation, telling the girl that he was very good with her. And then he embarrassed Isabel even more by offering her to bathe in a mountain river. In the morning, powerful blows resounded in the mountains, which frightened all the animals. It was Simon who hunted the great boar. He extracted a high-quality elixir from it with which he hoped to break through to the seventh stage of body purification, since he had not been able to do so for a long time. 
Later, the hero meditated by the waterfall and Isabel worried about him. The breakthrough to a new stage was delayed. But suddenly, incredible energy began to flow from the young man's body. He succeeded. He has reached a new stage, the seventh level of body purification. The boy was so focused on breaking through to a new level of strength that he didn't notice when Isabel came. She warned the young man about the mercenary exam, which begins this afternoon, to which he replied that he was ready to demonstrate the results of his training. Isabel said that the boy had been training hard and she believed in him and blushing. She added that mercenaries who passed the exam could get married. The boy did not pay attention to this, running forward and wanting to surprise his comrades as soon as possible. The exam was held on the main square of the Raphael Mercenary Detachment. Chairman Leon was very worried about today's exam and shared his thoughts with Logan, telling him that the mercenaries of the fire group had a lot of money and were able to solve all the issues with the auction, the contract, and even attract young talents to their group, while their The Storm group was much weaker. While chatting, Chairman Leon and Logan saw Simon, who was also in a hurry for today's exam. Logan immediately changed his expression. He was waiting for the duel with Simon and wanted to take Isabel for himself. Simon was also waiting for this moment and wanted to show what he was capable of. All the mercenaries stood in the square in front of the head, and he explained that only those who had reached the sixth level of body purification would be able to become official mercenaries and a special artifact with a spiritual power test crystal would be used to test their abilities. One of the best talents Evan was called to the arena first. Evan, approaching the crystal, poured all his power into it and it lit up. The crystal glowed and showed the level of spiritual abilities of Evan. He was the fifth. Therefore, the boy upset went back, and in the meantime, the chairman called a new applicant. In half an hour, only three out of 30 candidates passed the test. The rest of the boys and girls are stuck in the third or fourth stage of body cleansing, far from normal. Simon, eagerly awaiting his chance, was the last to enter the arena. His friends, who mocked him, called him worthless, as he had achieved nothing and had no right to challenge Logan to a duel. Simon didn't argue with the gossips. He just figured they would change their minds soon. The hero concentrated all his energy in the crystal. The crystal flashed with a bright light. Simon turned out to have a seventh level of body purification, which shocked his head. Everyone who laughed at the young man was amazed at his achievement, and their mouths fell open. Chairman Leon was also surprised because he remembered that only two months ago, Simon had level four. Logan, who had always despised the young man, could not believe his eyes. Chief Leon and Logan rushed to meet the young man. The chairman was glad that in his group there was a genius who could increase his strength so quickly. Mercenaries had a tradition that after receiving an official rank, they were given a nice nickname that reflected their strength and character. Chairman Leon offered the same to the young man. Simon thanked the boss but said he had already thought of his nickname. It was a great opportunity for Simon to be called by his real name, Oliver. Meanwhile, Logan was very angry at the boy's success and, without holding back, accused Oliver of fraud. The chief dismissed the accusation because the crystal was never wrong, but Logan insisted. With no way to prove his truth, Logan suggested a fight and see how strong Oliver is in combat. Everyone was waiting for the chairman's decision when he asked Oliver himself if he agreed to fight. Meanwhile, Logan began to threaten the boy, saying that he would leave him alive if he surrendered. Everyone was surprised by Oliver's decision to agree to the fight, because even if he reached the seventh stage, Logan was already the eighth. Even Isabel did not believe in his victory. The boys stood in the arena eye to eye as Logan continued to threaten Oliver, saying that he would soon feel the difference between them. Logan punched Oliver right in the face with his power, but he managed to dodge. Oliver pushed off the ground and also dodged the next punch. Oliver used his energy to push off the ground and do a backflip. Landing on the ground, the young man realized that Logan wanted to kill him. All his blows were deadly and filled with energy. Oliver shouted that it wasn't enough to kill him and prepared to counterattack. But suddenly, the arena was covered by an unusual blue energy. It was Logan's technique. His fist glowed blue, and he himself had extraordinary speed. The energy even affected those watching the battle. Oliver took the hit by using his own power. Logan was surprised that the young man was able to stop his blow. Watching the battle, Chief Leon was very pleased. He did not expect that the boys would fight each other on equal footing. Oliver Wright? He thought. This name suits Simon very well. The battle continued, 
and the guys exchanged many blows. But suddenly Logan used a new technique, a lightning strike, which Oliver narrowly dodged. Lightning illuminated the entire space and blocked the young man's power. But with the help of the battle cauldron, which gave Oliver additional strength, he was able to counterattack. He delivered a serious blow to Logan's stomach, which sent him flying out of the arena. Oliver's opponent was covered in blood and lay powerless. The arena was filled with cracks that remained after the battle. Everyone was surprised by what they saw. Logan, a stronger mercenary of the younger generation, was knocked down and also dealt a heavy blow. Logan also couldn't believe his defeat, and he wondered what technique Oliver was able to learn that hurt him so seriously. Gathering the last of his strength, Logan stood up and channeled all his spiritual energy into the sword. The battle gained new momentum. Everyone was anxiously waiting for its end. Logan lunged at Oliver with a sword and intended to kill him. Oliver didn't have a sword, so he used stones from the crushed arena, throwing them hard at his opponent. Logan didn't have time to parry Oliver's blow. The opponent hit him in the face, knocking out all his teeth. The crowd watched the match with open mouths. Logan struggled to his feet, accusing Oliver of throwing a rock at him. With a yell that would make Oliver regret it, he attacked with his sword again. But the young man was ready for this and threw even more stones at his opponent. There was nothing Logan could do. After some time, he lay completely unconscious. Simon won, chanted the crowd. Oliver approached Logan, who was lying on the ground, and asked what he thought of his so-called fake power. Logan still insisted that the young man was using some secret weapon, but Oliver laughed and replied that all his weapons were ordinary stones. The young man added that Logan should train better, and instead of spending money on good weapons, work more on himself. Logan wanted to get up, but Oliver wouldn't let him, pressing his foot to the ground. Logan said he would become stronger and avenge his loss. Meanwhile, Head Leon approached the rivals. He said that Oliver had already won and asked him to stop and stop bullying Logan. The chairman ordered Logan to be taken to the infirmary and declared Oliver the winner in front of everyone. This victory confirmed that the young man had reached the seventh level of body purification and the crowd chanted his new name, Oliver, Oliver, Oliver. Isabel hugged Oliver. She was very happy for his victory. She was very worried about the boy. Tears even appeared on her face, but Oliver calmed her down. Suddenly, someone called the young man and he felt a chill down his spine. It was the same friend of Sydney's who was constantly pestering the young man, trying to get his attention. Quickly taking Isabel's hand, the young man ran away because he really didn't like this annoying girl. The couple was sitting in a cozy gazebo in the middle of the forest and the boy could not calm down, complaining about the annoying girl Isabel. She has yellow teeth, greasy uncombed hair, and in general, she annoys me. Isabel was also unhappy with the situation that the one she thought was her boyfriend was being chased by an annoying girlfriend. The boy said that Isabel should not worry about it and that they should enjoy the local scenery. The girl also wondered why she had to call him Oliver now, since all her life she had known him as Simon. How can he change his name so quickly? To which the young man replied that it made him feel completely different. So he wants everyone to call him Oliver now. Suddenly, someone started approaching the couple and calling the boy's name. Evan was standing in front of the couple. Simon, no, it's Oliver. Sorry, there's a conversation. Evan said that Chairman Leon wanted to see Oliver in his office in the morning. And now that he had passed on the information, he could go. Evan took the girl and the young man for a couple and wished them happiness and health, which embarrassed Isabel. Oliver was glad that the girl didn't understand what Evan was hinting at. But indignant, he was completely different. Anyone can do anything with me, Oliver thought unhappily, adding that he didn't care that the master was treating him well now. He would leave the group of mercenaries in any case when he reached the kingdom of condensation. Key. Isabel was very upset that Oliver wanted to leave. The young man had a lot of ambitions and plans to stay in one city all his life, but he liked the girl. The boy hugged the girl and kissed him. The pair looked at each other and the young man dared to ask, I have a difficult path ahead of me, but I really want you to go with me. Will you agree, Isabel? Asked the young man. The girl agreed to the boy's proposal, and they kissed again. It was quiet and peaceful in the yard of the storm mercenaries, and Oliver was sitting in one of the huts. The young man was focused on meditation, because he needs to become stronger in order to definitely avenge the death of his friend Chris, as well as make Sidney regret leaving him. But suddenly the boy's energy flared up and he felt his body getting stronger. 
He had reached the eighth level of body purification. The difference between the seventh and the eighth level was very small, so it was so easy to win against Logan. After some time, Oliver stood in the office of Leon's chairman, who invited the boy to take a walk around the auction house. The boy did not understand why he had to go there, so he asked the head of Leon. The chairman answered Oliver's question by telling him that the auction today would be for advanced spirit level combat skills, so they should definitely get them. The chief asked Oliver to help him get these techniques because he believed that the young man had great potential. The chairman added that the young man now had the spray stage pill that was an incredible treasure of the auction house, and they could use it to their advantage. All Oliver had was a spray pill and three copper coins, but he said he was willing to give them up if it would help their squad. But in fact, the young man did not want to give up his pill and had already come up with a new plan to prevent this. Oliver and the head stood in the courtyard of the auction house, preparing for action. There were a lot of people waiting for the auction to start, but Oliver didn't notice. He was still angry that they wanted to use him. Alexandra came out of the main entrance together with the elders, and the young man immediately looked at her. The chairman warned Oliver that he should not offend anyone today, especially the auction house. Oliver thought that it was no longer of any importance, because he had already had time to argue with them. Suddenly, the head of the fire mercenaries, Eden, approached them. He was surprised to see Leon's head on the auction block. Chairman Eden began to mock Leon, saying that they were too poor to participate in tonight's auction. Chief Leon told him not to jump to conclusions because one of his squad members has a spray pill that is of the highest value. Chief Eden paid attention to Oliver and recognizing him, was very angry because he lost his son because of the boy, destroyed the relationship with the auction house, and paid them $7,000 for the so-called scam with the essence of monsters. Chief Eden began to threaten Oliver, vowing to kill him someday. But the boy did not stand aside and began to shout to the entire square that they wanted to kill him. The young man said that he came here with the head of his squad to help him, which angered the head of Leon who did not want conflicts. The boy continued to tear Eden's head off, saying that there was nothing he could do because it was forbidden to kill in the auction house. Why did he get so angry that he already took out his sword and wanted to start a fight? But head Leon stopped him, saying that there are strict rules in the auction house. The chairman added that they could settle their dispute after the auction if they really wanted to. The situation was saved by Miss Oleksandra, who reminded the disputants why they had gathered here and threatened to expel them if they continued to behave so loudly. The auction has already started. Mrs. Oleksandra invited everyone to the venue, so the crowd went into the hall. Mrs. Oleksandra was surprised by the behavior of the boy, who was not afraid of anyone or anything. At first glance, it seems so, Oliver is not afraid of anything, but when faced with danger, the first one begins to panic, and when he knows that no one will be able to stop him, he begins to create difficulties for his opponent. An unusual person, thought Mrs. Oleksandra. All the townspeople gathered in the auction center, an extremely large number of goods were exhibited, but everyone was waiting for the most important treasure. And now it's the turn of the most anticipated auction lot. Mountain Destroying Magic Earth Technique Scroll, which additionally notes the Mountain Splitting Palm skill. This is the first advanced technique of the spirit level, which no one in this city has, Mrs. Alexandra emphasized. Oliver was also surprised by this technique, to advance the level just one level lower than a saint. This is really a rare thing for such a small town. Chairman Leon emphasized that most of the mercenaries in their group use the element of Earth, this technique suits them best, and they simply have to get it. Meanwhile, Miss Alexandra continued to talk about the technique. It was found by a hunter in the forest, and according to the auction house's assessment, it belongs to the highest level and has no demonic roots. The starting bid is $1,000, shouted Miss Alexandra, and many voices answered her. Everyone wanted to get this technique. Voices echoed throughout the hall like waves on a stormy sea. $1050. $1100. 1,200. The stakes were growing. The storm was rising. Suddenly, amid the tumult, a decisive voice rang out. The group of mercenaries fire gives 2,000. While Leon, the head of the squad, did not hesitate. And Raphael, 2,100. He interrupted the bet without hesitation. Two representatives of mercenaries like gladiators competed for the main trophy equipment of the highest class. Eden, 
the leader of the fire group, was starting to lose patience. He could only afford such expenses after selling 15 level 5 monster essences, while Raphael could not even offer a thousand. Such were the rumors. Leon, the head of Raphael, calmly answered, We have an essence of extraordinary power, the value of which is at least $5,000. We will pay for the equipment and still remain in the red. The stakes continued to rise, but Oliver didn't like it. Leon already claimed his essence as his own, and he already disposed of it as if it were his own. The dispute reached its climax when heads began to fight right in the middle of the hall, in front of the bewildered Miss Oleksandra. After a fierce struggle, Eden admitted defeat and turned to Mrs. Oleksandra, informing her that she was leaving the game. The bidding ended, and Raphael, under the leadership of Leon, won, buying the equipment for $3,300. Mrs. Oleksandra announced, the equipment is moving to the Raphael detachment. Leon, filled with joy, together with Oliver, headed to get their new prey. Leon couldn't hold back his emotions. This is what I've been dreaming of for so long, and you, Oliver, must pay for it with essence immediately. The young man offered Mrs. Oleksandra the essence, but with a certain condition. I will give the essence, he said, because I am sorry to have taken it from you. But in exchange for four items, you have nothing to lose from this deal. So Oliver planned to punish Leon and restore good relations with Mrs. Alexandra, who was intrigued by his proposal. Chief Leon was enraged by the young man's betrayal, and he only replied, You shouldn't have been so clear. I said I'd give the essence, but I didn't promise I'd use it to pay for your purchase. Leon did not accept such an answer and was already preparing to attack Oliver, emitting terrible spiritual energy. But Miss Alexandra stopped him, demanding respect for herself and her auction house. Unable to use force against Oliver, Chief Leon began to plead and convince the boy to comply with his request. At the same time, Head Eden, having heard of the events on the stage, began to mock Leon's head, stating that he himself was to blame for his situation and that even heaven had punished him for his bad deeds and arrogance. Mrs. Alexandra, impressed by Oliver's intelligence and cleverness, asked what four things he wanted to receive. Oliver expressed his wishes. The first is a set of five essences of monsters of the sixth level of the condensation stage, belonging to the elements of gold, wood, fire, water, and earth. The second, $200, because it is important to have a reserve for a rainy day, and it is not appropriate for a martial artist to walk around with empty pockets. Lady Alexandra assured him that the first two requests would be easy to fulfill, and Oliver went on to talk about the third. He asked to take care of Isabel, who was being mistreated in Raphael's unit. Chief Leon, upset, stated that Oliver had betrayed him and the squad, to which Oliver replied that refusing to hand over his belongings was not true betrayal. He asked when the chairman became so mercantile. Chief Leon was outraged, calling Oliver arrogant and reckless, and pointed out that the boy had too much courage to speak out against him. Meanwhile, Mrs. Oleksandra agreed to the third request, surprised that Oliver had a girlfriend. Oliver asked to discuss the last two requests in private, and Miss Alexandra agreed. In the courtyard, alone with Lady Alexandra, Oliver was ready to reveal the fourth request. He said he wanted to learn the skill, Palm Cleaves Mountains. Miss Alexandra said that the training would cost $3,000, and with all Oliver's requests, she wouldn't be able to make any money from it. So she asked what her benefit would be. Oliver replied that Miss Alexandra was wrong, because he only wanted to learn one skill, not the entire technique of mountain destruction magic. He added that the auction house would be able to sell the equipment at a loss, and no one would know their secret, since he plans to leave town soon, and Chairman Leon would be forced to pay compensation for breaking the rules, so Oliver's offer was profitable. Mrs. Oleksandra was satisfied with the agreement and agreed, advising Oliver to do business and promised to fulfill all his requests. Meanwhile, in the auction hall, visitors were waiting for the return of Mrs. Oleksandra. When she returned, she apologized for the delay and announced the continuation of the auction. She also stated that if Chairman Leon does not pay for the item, he must pay $660 for defrauding the auction house. Chief Leon enraged by the failure, threatened to make Oliver pay for all his actions. Oliver, in turn, mentioned to the chief about his dead friend Chris and the other comrades who died due to the chief's inattention, to which Leon replied that they were the sacrifices necessary for the unit to thrive. 
Chairman Leon warned that at the next meeting he would kill Oliver and advised him to be careful. It had been some time since the last auction when Oliver paused thoughtfully in the shade of one of the houses that stood in the backyard of the auction house. Focused and persistent, Oliver worked on mastering the mountain-splitting palm skill, although he lacked confidence in its effectiveness and learning speed. Using the power of the battle cauldron, the boy penetrated the depths of the skill, analyzing its essence, and after a few minutes concluded that mountain splitting palm was an extremely high level skill, and soon he would be able to break rocks with his bare hands. While learning a new skill, the boy was stunned to feel that his strength could match that of low level saint techniques. At this time, Mrs. Oleksandra approached Oliver, who informed him that Oliver could master the mountain destruction magic technique at no cost. The woman also brought him monster essences and the money he asked for. Miss Alexandra was unable to find the essence of earth and gold elemental monsters because they were extremely rare, so Oliver decided to stay at the auction house for a few more days. Oliver expressed his sincere thanks to Mrs. Alexandra for her concern, and she, in turn, informed him that his beloved Isabel would be arriving soon. Not wanting to waste a single moment, the young man headed to the forest on the auction house's grounds to hone his skills. At first, he practiced basic strokes, putting all his skill into them. He then moved on to honing a new skill, Mountain Splitting Palm. Terrible blows, shaking the very earth, echoed throughout the forest. The young man was able to master a new skill by destroying all the trees around him that stood in his way to mastery. But suddenly... From the unknown depths of the forest, Mrs. Oleksandra approached him at great speed. Oliver was confused by what had happened, but the woman, angry with the young man, attacked him. Miss Oleksandra angrily told the boy that he was behaving terribly on her territory, destroying everything around her, and continued to hit him. Oliver couldn't get the woman with normal punches, so he decided to put his newly learned skill to the test. But even this skill could not harm the woman who, looking at the young man, said that he was very weak. Later, the woman calmed down a little and told the boy not to make any more destructive pranks in her forest and to behave quietly. The boy was not upset by his loss. On the contrary, it gave him the motivation to train even more and improve his skills. After a while, Oliver finished his training. After its completion, the young man visited Miss Oleksandra, who had interesting news for him. She told about a novice cultivator who had raised his level from second to fifth in the spray realm in two months, almost reaching the strength of Alexandra herself. This cultivator, who resembled Lady Sidney, the daughter of Leon's head, was known to all as Amelia. Oliver guessed that it could be Lady Sidney because in the mortal realm she was called Amelia and she had already reached the fifth stage of the spray realm. It was incredible. The young man replied to Miss Alexandra that he did not know this newcomer, but was surprised by the speed of her progress. Mrs. Alexandra explained that Amelia has an immortal soul. Immortal soul allows you to train at an extraordinary speed. After talking with Mrs. Alexandra, Oliver started training with new enthusiasm. Thanks to the battle cauldron and monster essences, he had reached the ninth stage of body purification and now aspired to the realm of Ki'i condensation. His training took place in Mrs. Alexandra's secret room for self-cultivation. Using the monster's essence, Oliver began to absorb it using the immortal cultivation technique. Golden energy surged around him, and with each bit of essence he absorbed, he grew stronger. But suddenly, the energy became too much, and Oliver could not fully absorb it. A vortex of energy swirled around him, making it difficult to cultivate an immortal technique that could only be initiated at the ninth stage of body purification. However, Oliver did not give up and continued to try. In the end, he had successfully absorbed all the energy and was preparing to reach the first stage of key condensation. Oliver absorbed the energy of all the elements and they began to conflict in his body the element of metal turning into the element of wood as they could not coexist in one soul. Such masters, who could not fuse the elements together, risked losing their minds. Different elements in Oliver's body and soul began to transform. Water, wood, fire, earth, metal united into one force, tearing the boy's body into pieces. But suddenly the pain stopped and all the strength began to be absorbed. It was the action of Oliver's artifact, the War Cauldron, which absorbed and transformed all energy. Power surged around the boy, and even though the artifact was helping him, it still hurt a lot. 
Oliver continued to meditate through the Force, trying to raise his spiritual level. Time passed and Oliver was still meditating, but suddenly his strength ran out and he fell to the ground, while the battle cauldron in his soul continued to work, absorbing and recycling his spiritual energy. In the secret room of Mrs. Alexandra, Oliver continued to lie in a state of amnesia. However, he suddenly came back to reality as he felt pain engulf his body. Standing up, he began to survey his surroundings to make sure his training was successful. It turned out that everything went extremely well, because the battle cauldron helped the boy reach the first stage of key condensation. Oliver felt incredible satisfaction from the fact that such a powerful artifact was in his possession and helped him increase his level. Now he remembered that the battle cauldron had another unique ability, to store the secret techniques of his clan. Using the power of the cauldron, the young man began to learn secret combat techniques. The boy was stunned as he realized that the battle cauldron had risen in rank with him and had already reached the intermediate stage of the mortal realm, which was an incredible testament to their growth together. If he can raise his level and the level of the battle cauldron to the holy stage, then no one will be able to harm him. After completing the training, the boy approached the exit of the secret training room. A few days later, Oliver and Isabel were relaxing in the yard of the auction house. He had a serious conversation with the girl, informing her of his intention to go to the demonic monster forest to practice, assuring her that the place was dangerous and he did not want to risk her safety. The girl replied that regardless of his choice of path, she wants to be close to him. Although he was concerned for her welfare, he couldn't leave Isabel alone, so they decided to go together but he stressed the need to follow his instructions. The girl was delighted with this decision. Before leaving, Oliver approached Mrs. Alexandra to say goodbye. She looked at him with sadness and hope, thinking about his future and the strength of the young man in their next meeting. Oliver and Isabel, holding hands, headed down the main street, approaching the city gates, ready for new adventures. But suddenly, Logan and other members of Raphael's squad appeared on their way, who met them and unexpectedly began to threaten them. Logan, seeking revenge for the insult received during the mercenary exam, confronted Oliver, but Oliver only coldly replied that they would get out of his way. Logan, full of anger, concentrated all his energy to attack, but Oliver, with unwavering confidence, was ready for the clash. Evading the attack with ease, Oliver forced Logan to retreat, and then, standing motionless, radiated his powerful spiritual energy that made everyone present tense as they realized that he had reached a new, unprecedented level of skill. Oliver, who was already about to leave the scene of the collision, stopped, feeling the looks of everyone present. One of the veterans of Raphael's squad, with undisguised hostile intent, blocked his path. With a sneer, he stated that they couldn't let Oliver go, as his actions had damaged the reputation of their unit. When Oliver asked what Raphael wanted, the mercenary lunged at him without warning with a sword. Surprised by such a sneaky attack, Oliver instinctively dodged the blow. The mercenary, emitting powerful wind energy, swung his sword in front of Oliver, creating gusts of wind. Screaming that Oliver had insulted their entire squad, the mercenary lunged at him with intent to kill. Oliver, using his strength, dodged the wind blows and lifted the stones from the broken asphalt. He threw rocks at the mercenary using his power. The mercenary mockingly replied that throwing stones is child's play. Using the hurricane palm technique, the mercenary forced Oliver into the air. Due to the speed of the opponent, Oliver could not counterattack. Meanwhile, the mercenary, gathering all his wind power in one hand, rushed towards Oliver. Oliver decided to try a counterattack and used his new skill mountain splitting palm. The energies of the rivals clashed, causing everything around to collapse. The collision of rivals caused a big explosion that shook everyone around. The mercenary was defeated. Deputy Chairman, Deputy Chairman! Other mercenaries shouted, quickly running up to their defeated comrade. Oliver, enraged by the actions of his former colleagues who tried to kill him, decided that this had to end. But suddenly, an unknown energy flared up next to the boy, blocking his path. Oliver, with the grace of a shadow, jumped from the sudden blow that came through the air behind him, before him. Like an immovable rock stood the head of Leon, his sword drawn with the gleam of a promise of battle. You won't run away from me today, Leon thundered, and with a warrior's cry he rushed to attack Oliver. Chief Leon, with threats that sounded like thunder, demanded that the boy show his true skill. Oliver, light as a feather, dodged every blow but felt that his strength was not enough compared to Leon, 
whose blows could destroy mountains. We need to change tactics, thought Oliver, and gathering all his will, used the mountain-splitting palm technique. However, even with this powerful technique, it was still no match for Leon's head. Oliver's punches, like raindrops, could not penetrate Leon's impenetrable defense. Oliver's arm was dislocated, and his battle-torn clothes hung in tatters. Meanwhile, Head Leon, without stopping the attack, threatened that no one had the right to disrespect his mercenary squad, Raphael. Oliver, realizing that victory over Leon was impossible, stopped and asked for a rest, saying that he had important news. Let me go if you don't want to meet your fate, Oliver shouted, his eyes burning with determination. Leon, with irony in his voice, replied that he wouldn't put up with the jokes, but Oliver continued, asking if Leon had thought about the rate at which he could grow in power. Oliver made Leon think about his rapid progress. From the third to the seventh level of body purification in two months, reaching the QE condensation realm in 20 days. If Leon let him go today, he might face problems in the future. After some thought, Chairman Leon decided to listen to Oliver, who insisted on telling something critical about his daughter Sydney. Sydney didn't come home because she went to the capital. Oliver began. She met a young master from the Ouyang clan. Your daughter now calls herself Amelia and lives off capital master Ouyang, Oliver continued, adding that even Leon's mercenaries could not match the wealth of the great and ancient Ouyang family. Leon, hearing this, could not believe that his daughter could do such a thing. Oliver, determined to leave town to avoid further trouble, reminded Leon before he left that he should know his daughter better than anyone, and therefore should understand that what Oliver said was true. He also noted that this information can be easily verified by going to the capital. The mercenaries, confused by Oliver's words, called for him to be stopped, but Leon, focused on the news about his daughter, ordered them to delay the pursuit and check information on Sydney. Meanwhile, Oliver and Isabel hit the road, making their way through the forest where the air vibrated with heat. Exhausted, Oliver found rest under a tree, and Isabel, reassuring him, assured him that they were almost there. Isabel pointed to a town looming in the distance, and they hurried there, hoping for a well-deserved rest and a delicious lunch. Passing through the town, they were surprised by the number of people. Many visiting martial masters like them sought shelter in crowded taverns and restaurants. Oliver guessed that this was a town that attracted strong masters from all over the country. A man with a high level of cultivation was standing near the building with the sign Hunter Recruitment, recruiting people for his team. A crowd of people wanting to get a place in the hunting team lined up, and Oliver, approaching the man, asked to join the team. Oliver introduced himself, indicating his cultivation level, the first stage of Kui condensation. The man, with undisguised disdain, replied to Oliver that there was no place for the young rascals in their team. The hunter advised Oliver to approach the rich kids across the street, who might accept him because of his youth and inexperience. Isabel questioned whether they should go ahead and go to them, to which Oliver replied that they had no choice since there were only two recruiters, and if one team rejected them, they should try their luck with another. Approaching the young practitioners, Oliver reported his cultivation level and that of Isabel, who was in the seventh stage of body purification. A charming blonde from the group gladly accepted them and offered to meet the team captain. The captain of the team turned out to be a young man no older than Oliver, who proudly introduced himself as Henry Ming. Gathering the team's attention, Captain Henry announced a plan. They would follow the tracks of experienced hunters, which would minimize danger, and they would also be equipped with enough medical supplies for any contingencies. In addition, he has already come up with a loud name for their team, Invincibles. Oliver instantly understood that the captain was still new to this business, but having solved all the formalities, he and Isabel went to a cozy tavern. After saying goodbye to Henry before evening, the couple went into the city. As they dined, Isabel quizzed Oliver curiously about the upcoming mission, expressing her doubts about the young men they had teamed up with, as they didn't seem like the type to need money and apparently lacked the art of hunting. So how were they going to survive in such a dangerous campaign? Oliver agreed with Isabel and advised her to be careful with her new allies, assuring her that in case of any threat, they would immediately leave the team. Later, a group gathered near the forest of demonic monsters, which Oliver joined. 
His new companions watched every detail of the forest with interest, as if they had gone hunting for the first time and went in search of weak beasts. When they saw a demonic blue-eyed fox cub, the blonde from their team decided to hunt it. But Oliver noted that the fox was still too weak and catching it was a waste of time. However, the blonde did not listen to Oliver and rushed after the fox. She tried unsuccessfully to catch him, but demonic blue-eyed foxes have been known since ancient times to be the fastest creatures among all beasts, so she was unable to catch up with him. But suddenly something flashed past her so fast that she didn't even have time to see it. It was a fox running away from her. The bald man would probably have managed to escape if not for Oliver, who deftly intercepted him. Holding the fox, Oliver looked very pleased with his success. The blonde woman congratulated him on a successful hunt and asked what he was going to do with the fox, because he himself said that it was worthless. Oliver only answered mysteriously that she would soon understand everything. It was evening, and Oliver began to grill a delicious barbecue on the fire, which caused the indignation of the blonde, who hoped that he would let the little monster go. Oliver pointed out that it was just natural selection, and no one was forcing her to eat this meat to which the blonde responded with even more anger and outrage, yelling at the young man. Later that evening, when the camp had already sunk into rest, strange sounds were suddenly heard nearby. Oliver guessed it was a wolf's lash, and his guess was confirmed when a few minutes later, a pack of red wolves came out from behind the bushes. Oliver's new companions panicked, shouting for help throughout the camp. The wolves, sensing the fear of the humans, began to growl even louder as they approached the group. But Oliver, who remained steadfast, told Isabel to hide and watched them with a smile. Mobilizing his energy, Oliver instantly rushed at the wolves with incredible speed. He effectively destroyed the monsters one by one, leaving them no chance. After the last wolf was taken down, Oliver felt the satisfaction of a job well done. Turning to his companions, Oliver asked loudly if they were all safe. But it turned out that the entire group had already fled into the trees, leaving him frustrated and aware of who he was dealing with. Henry began to make excuses, saying that he wanted to give Oliver a chance to prove himself, but the young man realized that he could not count on their support. While Oliver was surrounded by even more wolves, the earth began to tremble and a terrible howl sounded throughout the neighborhood. The wolves gathered and rushed at the young man, but the real threat was still approaching and Oliver sensed that someone much more powerful was approaching them, so he prepared to attack. The King of Red Wolves appeared in front of him, a demonic monster that had reached the stage of key condensation. Those who hid in the trees were terrified and hoped for Oliver's victory. Despite their fear, two boys from the group decided to help their new friend. But Henry stopped them, saying that as a captain, he does not allow them to take risks, because their task is only to defend themselves. Oliver, left alone against the Red Wolf King, stood firm. There was no trace of fear on his face, only determination and the will to win. Focusing his gaze on the monster, Oliver used the Mountain Splitting Palms technique and boldly attacked the wolf's head. Oliver, gathering all his strength, delivered a powerful blow to the wolf's jaw. Immediately after that, he concentrated his spiritual energy and rushed into battle against the monster again. The wolf, not wanting to remain passive, also attacked Oliver decisively. Oliver used a thunderbolt to push the wolf back, but suddenly from behind, the wolf's paw hit the young man. The same wolf, quickly turning around, attacked Oliver again, knocking him back. Oliver hit a tree and blood poured from a gash on his head. Isabel, filled with anxiety for Oliver, knew that she would not be able to help him with her strength, and the young men in the group who wanted to help were also worried about him. Despite Henry's order not to help Oliver, the boys rejected his absurd commands and rushed to help. Meanwhile, the wolf decided to finish off Oliver, approaching him and emitting spiritual energy. Oliver, who had just regained consciousness, was aware that he would not be able to avoid the next blow. But the guys from the team came to the rescue, attacking the monster together. They declared that they would help defeat the wolf and stood next to Oliver, preparing for battle. Oliver was glad to know that not everyone on the team was a coward. The demonic wolves attacked in a pack, led by the Wolf King. The boys in the group took it upon themselves to fight the lesser wolves, while Oliver declared that he would handle the Wolf King. The young man was ready for the second round and was confident of his victory. The wolf and Oliver engaged in a fierce battle, going all out. 
but suddenly the monster disappeared from Oliver's sight. Oliver instinctively knew the wolf would attack from above and jumped to the side as the monster blasted its energy to create a crater in the ground. Oliver couldn't fathom how such a huge beast could move at such speed as if it had the ability to teleport. The wolf used its boa claws and terrifying waves of energy flew straight at Oliver. The young man again found himself under a powerful blow. The guys on the team saw this and used their most powerful techniques to help Oliver. Fiery strike! Ha! Huh. The palm of the storm! They shouted, rushing at the king of wolves. Their attacks merged into one, turning into a monstrous ball of fire that raced straight at the monster. And now the monster felt the force of the blow. Oliver knew it was his time. He concentrated all his strength in one blow and used the mountain destruction technique. The forces of the wolf and Oliver collided in an epic showdown. The wolf flew away from the young man, and only the powerful battle energy was still raging around. Oliver landed on the ground, exhausted but beating the wolf, which was the most important thing of all. The wolf lay unconscious while Oliver gathered his strength. Isabel ran up to the young man, filled with excitement for him. While the pair were talking, Henry approached Oliver, congratulating him on his victory and expressing his admiration for his courage. Oliver, not too happy about Henry's company, replied dryly that they needed to have a serious talk. Oliver argued that he should lead the team. Henry disagreed with this, but Oliver objected, noting that the team assembled too hastily and didn't hold a proper vote to choose a leader. Oliver emphasized that everyone had to make their own choices. He couldn't promise complete safety, but he guaranteed that everyone would receive a portion of the monster's essence, much to the team's delight and they unanimously chose him as their leader. Over the next few days, led by Oliver, the team hunted demonic monsters. Henry, although disgruntled, stayed with them, understanding the dangers of wandering the demonic monster forest alone. During the hunts, Oliver reached the second stage of Kii condensation by using the essences of the captured monsters. In the evening, when the team was resting after the day's adventures, Oliver asked Henry why he would go to such a dangerous place without needing money. Henry replied that he was only honing his techniques and skills at home, but without actual combat, his progress was limited, so he decided to go on a journey. While everyone was having fun, Oliver thought that if he had been as rich as Henry, he would never have embarked on such a long and dangerous journey, considering it pointless. Meanwhile, the crew had fun praising Isabel's culinary talents, after which she agreed to continue cooking for them. With Oliver as the new leader, things were going great in the group, with all the members making great progress, moving up several levels in cultivation, and honing their fighting skills. But suddenly the ground began to shake, and Oliver, as the strongest, listened for something approaching. He warned that a powerful monster was coming, and everyone had to prepare for battle. Suddenly a shadow jumped out from behind the thickets. It was a huge lion that radiated sinister energy. The monster was called the Dragon Lion of Fire, and the earth crumbled under his steps. The lion swung at Oliver, firing a powerful blast of energy at him. The young man jumped back, ordering everyone to hide, because the lion's flames could burn weaker cultivators to death without even leaving a soul. Everyone started to run away, but Isabel was stunned into silence as the huge lion charged straight at her. The monster swung its paw at the girl, and she already had time to say goodbye to life. Blood splattered. Isabel. Feeling relieved, but not yet fully aware of what had happened, looked around. She saw Oliver standing protectively in front of her, holding a lion's paw that was about to swing at her. Oliver, angry to the brim, shouted at the monster, Choose a worthy opponent, not a defenseless girl! The fight between Oliver and the lion flared up with renewed vigor. Isabel managed to retreat, but her heart was pounding with anxiety for Oliver, seeing how he had injured himself defending her. Oliver just smiled at Isabel and assured her that it was just a scratch, but the worst thing would be if something happened to her, so he had to put an end to this lion. Sensing that the lion was extremely strong, Oliver concentrated as he prepared for a decisive battle. He lunged at the lion, which responded by releasing a stream of fiery energy from its mouth. The fight between Oliver and the lion gained momentum as they exchanged swift blows using their spirit energy. Oliver eager to deliver a decisive blow, jumped up, activating the ground technique. Using the power of the earth, he delivered a powerful blow to the lion. The ground split open and the monster fell into the abyss. The team, seeing Oliver deal a fatal blow to the lion, decided to join the fight. 
Gathering all their strength, the young men rushed at the monster, ready to support their leader. The lion suddenly attacked the blonde girl, inflicting deep wounds on her. But Oliver quickly picked up the girl and carried her away from danger. The girl, not appreciating the rescue, demanded to let her go to the ground. The lion began to move away from the group, and Oliver, putting the girl in a safe place, gave chase. The group tried to chase the lion, but his speed was too fast. Oliver ordered the team to continue chasing the lion, promising the essence of a level 5 monster to whoever defeats it. Henry expressed concern that the monster was heading deep into the forest where other powerful beasts resided, but Oliver, confident of his victory, decided to continue the pursuit, seeing this as the perfect moment to attack. The team, overcome with fear, remained where they were, while Oliver fearlessly followed the lion. Finally, the young man caught up with the monster. With all its might, the lion launched a fiery blow from its mouth in the direction of the young man. Oliver deftly dodged the attack, realizing that it wasn't at full strength. Gathering all his energy, he jumped up, preparing to counterattack. Using a new technique mastered from the Battle Cauldron, Oliver unleashed a Heaven's Dragon attack. And with that decisive blow, he defeated the monster. Oliver, standing over the body of the defeated monster, prepared to collect its valuable essence. But suddenly his actions were interrupted when the arrows hit the already dead lion. The young man didn't care who shot because it was his prey, and he wouldn't let anyone else use it. So he quickly set about gathering the essence from the monster. The young man did not care who fired the arrow. Despite the obstacles, the prey will be his. He successfully collected the essence of a fifth condensation level monster, which became a great treasure for him. Suddenly, an unfamiliar young man approached Oliver, demanding the essence for himself, but the hero replied that he would not receive it, regardless of the circumstances. The boy stated that he would take the essence by force if necessary, to which Oliver replied that he was not afraid of threats and would not allow himself to be intimidated. Suddenly, a girl approached them, who called the boy Lucas and condemned his attempts to take what did not belong to him. She added that the essence was only level 5 and Lucas should not tarnish their association's reputation for petty thievery. After the girl told Lucas to follow her, they left, and Lucas, enraged, threatened Oliver with death if he crossed his path again. Oliver only replied that he was looking forward to their next meeting. Afterwards, Oliver's entire team gathered around the body of the defeated Fire Dragon Lion, expressing their admiration for his strength and bravery. Oliver suggested that the team end the trek, as they had already obtained many valuables and explored most of the forest, and further travel deeper into the thickets would be too risky. After saying goodbye to their comrades, everyone went their separate ways. When the teammates had already left, Oliver and Isabel were about to leave, but were stopped by Henry, who wanted to discuss something important. Henry enthusiastically announced that the hunt for the treasures hidden within the forest would soon begin. It turned out that Henry was working for a young master of the Ouyang noble family. He revealed that the family he was serving had powerful connections with the great martial masters, and the treasures in question belonged to the pre-divine realm level. Many years ago, a great master settled in the depths of this demonic forest and disappeared. Countless martial masters went in search of this master's treasures, but despite numerous expeditions, many died and the treasures remained undiscovered. Oliver doubted the feasibility of this mission because if a high-level master couldn't get out of the forest, how could they? Beginners do it. But Henry persisted, having a plan. He dreamed of hiring strong practitioners, but he feared betrayal. Isabel sensibly expressed doubt that even the three of them would have a hard time succeeding. Suddenly, their conversation was interrupted by Mia, a blonde girl who was also delayed. Henry expressed his displeasure at Mia eavesdropping on their conversation, but she replied that she was a member of the Full Moon Alliance. Oliver realized that the annoying young man who tried to take his essence was part of this alliance. Mia confirmed his guess and added that her alliance members were already in the forest, so she would ask her mother for help, which raised questions about her identity. Henry asked Mia in surprise if her mother was the ultimate queen of Waterlake, to which Mia nodded in response. Oliver doubted the Alliance would want to risk it for them, but when Henry and Mia were about to leave, he decided to join them. Thus, the four of them set off in search of the Full Moon Alliance. The clearing in the forest roared with voices coming from all directions. Oliver and his new allies watched the Alliance's actions with interest from the cover of the trees. 
Mia admitted that her mother might leave her with the Alliance and asked the boys to help her escape in case something happened, which they agreed with a light laugh. Running out from behind the bushes, Mia rushed to the girl whom Oliver had recently met. They turned out to be sisters. The sisters hugged tightly, and Mia introduced her friends. Oliver, Henry, and Isabel approached the girls, and Mia's sister recognized Oliver with great surprise. She asked what he wanted, and Oliver replied that he would make a deal with her master regarding the treasures hidden in the forest. The sister was skeptical of Oliver, stating the vast difference in power between them. But Mia stood up for him, claiming he was telling the truth, and asked permission to speak to her mother. The sister agreed to comply with the request, but warned that Mia might receive a reprimand from her mother for her antics. As they passed through the Alliance camp, everyone greeted Mia's sister. Miss Scarlet! Good afternoon, Scarlet! And the girls eyed Oliver, who was being seen for the first time, with interest and even proposed to him. Mia advised to ignore the flirting girls, to which Oliver asked with a smile if she was shy. Suddenly, their path was blocked by Lucas, who loudly scolded Mia for bringing outsiders. Mia and Scarlet ignored him, insisting on talking to their mother. Suddenly, there was a loud crash, and Oliver quickly pushed the girls away to protect them. Lucas, anger and indignation in his voice, recognized Oliver. He stated that the head of the Alliance would not hold a conversation with him, highlighting the gap between their statuses and making Oliver want to prove his worth. Lucas challenged Oliver, stating that before meeting the head of the Alliance, the young man must first defeat him in a duel. Oliver, with a small smile, asked Lucas if he really wanted to test his strength against him. Lucas, with surprise in his voice, replied that he did not expect to meet Oliver so soon. Oliver noted that he didn't expect Lucas to use his high position in the Alliance for theft and insults. Lucas, not listening to any more words, attacked Oliver decisively. He threw numerous blows, but none of them could reach Oliver. Scarlet, Mia's sister, was watching the match, already predicting Lucas's inevitable defeat. Explosions rumbled through the forest. Lucas used his best techniques, but Oliver only dodged skillfully. Oliver, ready to counterattack, waited for the right moment. Lucas, gathering all his strength, swung at Oliver. Oliver, in turn, responded with a powerful strike using his fighting technique. Lucas flew back with a loud crash into a tree. He yelled that Oliver had broken his leg, to which Oliver replied that Lucas had started the attack himself. Lucas continued to threaten Oliver, promising to settle with him later. Scarlet, watching Oliver, realized his strength, which, although hidden behind a simple appearance, was superior to most of the Alliance members, and she was sure that he was hiding something. Suddenly, the head of the Alliance appeared in front of the group and asked with displeasure if they had finished their business yet, complaining about the excessive noise. Scarlet, along with the other girls, was confused that their actions had upset the head of the Alliance. Oliver and his companions greeted the head politely. The young man was quick to apologize to her, noting that they were newbies and didn't know the local rules, regretting that they had disturbed the Alliance head during her cultivation. The head of the Alliance replied that she had been watching the events and noted that Lucas had been acting defiant lately, so his defeat would be a good lesson for him, and asked the girls to take care of his injuries. After everyone had left, it was time for a quiet conversation. Oliver told the head of the Alliance, Miss Harper, about his request to help find the Master's treasures hidden in this forest, and after discussing the terms, she agreed. Miss Harper and Oliver concluded that it would be difficult for ordinary people to reach the place where the Master of the Pre-Divine Realm had gone, so they decided to go searching after a short rest. Meanwhile, in the tent of the Alliance camp, Lucas was raging at his defeat. Beside him was his sister, who he yelled at in a fit of rage, demanding that she get out of his way as he was about to get revenge on Oliver. His sister tried to calm him down and said that if any cultivation techniques were found during the treasure hunt, she would share them with her brother. But Lucas was blinded by anger and didn't want to hear anything. He just wanted revenge on Oliver. Meanwhile, Oliver and Miss Harper at the head of the Alliance began to look for treasures. They had been walking through the forest for a long time. Oliver, carefully studying the map, informed the head of the Alliance that they would reach their destination in two hours. The chief ordered everyone to stop and rest so they could continue their journey later with renewed strength, while Oliver quietly told Isabel that he would be leaving for a few minutes and told her to stay with everyone and await his return. Isabel wondered where he was going, but Oliver quickly ran in an unknown direction. 
Lucas's sister, noticing that Oliver had disappeared, raised her eyebrows in surprise, trying to understand the reason for his sudden absence. At this time, Oliver sought seclusion to meditate in peace and raise his level of cultivation. He thought about Sidney Amelia, who had reached the spray realm at only 20 years old, and wondered how long it would take him to reach the same level with the Battle Cauldron. Meanwhile, Lucas's sister went in search of Oliver, sensing that he was hiding something. She was convinced that his haste was not without reason, and decided to reveal this secret. Sophia found Oliver just as he had reached the third stage of key condensation, greatly increasing his level. With his new strength, he could defeat a master who was one stage above him. Sophia, finally finding Oliver, watched him with hidden curiosity. Oliver, surprised by the girl's sudden appearance, asked who she was, to which Sophia replied that she was Sophia, Lucas's sister, and had come to avenge her brother. Oliver, with a hint of sarcasm, replied that he didn't think Lucas was pathetic enough to feel sorry for his sister, but Sophia, outraged by his words, instantly moved behind him and struck. Sophia's speed surprised Oliver. He did not expect such agility from her. Using the whirlwind palm technique, Sophia tried to cut Oliver in half with her powerful punch. She attacked the young man who dodged her swift blows with great difficulty. Oliver managed to block her attack using his defensive skills. After that, he pushed Sophia away from him using all his strength. Sophia, with a wry smile, told Oliver that he had turned out to be much weaker than she had expected. Oliver stopped Sophia, gently saying that a fight with her was the last thing he wanted, but she replied with suspicion in her voice that his new stage of key condensation did not give him the right to be arrogant. The battle flared up with renewed vigor when Sophia, with a challenge in her voice, declared that, being in the fifth stage, she was undoubtedly stronger than Oliver and would defeat him. Sophia released waves of spiritual energy as she skillfully wielded her sword, but Oliver focused and skillfully dispelled them with his own power. Two powerful forces clashed in a fierce confrontation where victory was unknown to anyone. Suddenly, Oliver jumped up, performing a mountain splitting palm, and attacked Sophia with all his might. Confused, Sophia couldn't believe that Oliver, whom she thought was weaker, possessed such power, and she had to fend off his blows. Oliver, with all his determination, managed to impress Sophia, and he concentrated all his strength to win. But suddenly, Sophia let out a loud cry of panic. Oliver looked around in confusion, not understanding what had happened when Sophia started calling him a dirty pervert and yelling at him. Oliver was shocked to see that his punch had ripped off Sophia's clothes, and she was standing half naked, but he pointed out that Sophia had attacked him herself, and it was her own fault. This only increased Sophia's anger, and she pushed Oliver to the ground with all her might. Oliver, feeling pain, did not want to continue the fight, understanding the girl's uncomfortable position. He ran away determinedly, but Sophia, despite her torn clothes, kept up, trying to give him more blows. Oliver wondered in amazement how long she was going to pursue him, while Sophia screamed that she would pursue him until he died, not a step behind. Suddenly, Oliver stopped and so did Sophia. Oliver noticed Sophia's torn clothes and advised her to back off. Then he offered her his outer garment to cover her, because the girl was clearly not comfortable. Despite her anger, the girl reluctantly agreed to accept the clothes, sharply snatching them from Oliver's hands. The young man, announcing his departure, noted that Sophia can change clothes without hindrance and should return his cloak. Half an hour later, the association, which was already preparing for departure, was eagerly waiting for the continuation of the journey. Oliver was still missing, and Isabel was most concerned about his absence. But suddenly the young man approached the girl, and when asked by Isabel about his location, Oliver answered that he was meditating. He suggested that Isabel hurry after the association, promising to talk to her later. But suddenly Sophia approached them, who, without revealing the whole truth, smiled and returned Oliver his cloak. Sophia, still smiling, noted that after their incident, she would have liked to keep his cloak as a keepsake, but decided to return it to Oliver anyway. Isabel, hearing their conversation, was deeply saddened and, unable to hold back her tears, ran away. Stopping in the forest, she was angry with Oliver, thinking that he had betrayed her. The young man, having found Isabel, approached her and asked her to listen to him, urging him not to make hasty conclusions. He explained that Sophia was taking revenge on him for personal reasons because he defeated her brother Lucas, and she was trying to hurt him by telling a false story. After which, Oliver and Isabel reconciled. 
After reconciling, Isabel and Oliver quickly caught up with the Alliance, and they all moved forward together, united by a common goal. Oliver kept up with the map, and soon they found themselves somewhere near the treasure itself, which beckoned them with its secrets. Suddenly, one of the Alliance members pointed to something unusual ahead. It was a corpse lying abandoned. The gruesome skeleton resting near the tree was almost completely decomposed, with only a few bones as reminders of its former life. The head of the Alliance, Miss Harper, upon examining the skeleton, could not determine how long ago he had died, as there were no signs of a struggle with spiritual energy or a beast nearby. Miss Harper assumed that the skeleton did not belong to a master, as his weapon was too simple to belong to a warrior of high rank. But suddenly, Sophia intervened in the conversation between the head of the Alliance and Oliver, claiming that Oliver is deceiving everyone and leading them by the nose, because there are no treasures, and he might want to harm them. Sophia was happy with the made-up story, hoping to get revenge on Oliver, but he quickly refuted her accusations, urging everyone to be patient and pointing out that according to the map, the master's cave was halfway to the top of the mountain. Miss Harper agreed that the skeleton could have belonged to a treasure hunter who had failed in his search. Therefore, Oliver and the head of the Alliance decided to continue their journey because there were many caves on the top of the mountain and they hoped to find treasures in one of them. Time passed and the team was still searching for the right cave. Mia, Miss Harper's daughter, who had also joined the trip, was exhausted, and Oliver wondered how a martial artist could have such low spirits. Miss Harper looked around, feeling anxious, but regardless, she ordered the Alliance members to search the area and report back if they found anything. But suddenly, Mia ran out of the forest, joyfully announcing that she had found a cave ahead, and everyone rushed to her, full of hopes for an opening. Arriving at the cave Mia had pointed out, the group saw its unusual shape that resembled a toothy maw ready to swallow anyone who dared to enter. A pile of human bones was lying near the entrance to the cave, and Oliver, with joy in his heart, realized that the cave with the master's treasures not only existed, but that it was right in front of them, which he immediately informed the head of the Alliance. Oliver suggested that Miss Harper carefully prepare for the entrance to the cave, because it is not known what awaits them inside. But suddenly, Henry, examining a large stone near the cave, discovered traces of a monster which testified to its enormous size and strength. Everyone agreed that fighting such a monster would be no easy task, and Miss Harper noted that the tracks were still fresh and there was a chipped piece of rock nearby. Miss Harper began debating with Oliver whether they should continue on their way or turn back, but Oliver insisted on continuing their search. Miss Harper expressed her concern as they couldn't be sure that they would find any treasure in the cave, but the encounter with the monster was almost guaranteed, and given his strength, he could easily defeat them. Oliver suggested that the most experienced and strongest be sent to scout the cave, so that in case of danger they could escape, and the rest of the team would remain unharmed. Miss Harper and Oliver discussed who to send to scout, realizing that they should be people capable of confronting the monster if it suddenly appeared, so they decided to go forward together to the cave. Aware of the risk of entering the cave, the group knew that many techniques left behind by the great masters had been lost, and many rich people were willing to pay huge sums for such treasures. And if the technique of the pre-divine realm appears in the world, it will shake the universe of cultivators, and their weapons made of unusual materials are also extremely rare and powerful. Meanwhile, Miss Harper and Oliver continued their journey deep into the cave. Suddenly, they smelled a terrible smell, which became stronger and stronger, left by the corpses of animals. Miss Harper guessed that there had been a battle between demonic monsters and cultivators, as the cave was full of scratches and marks from claws and swords. It seems that these cultivators were looking for treasure, but encountered monsters and couldn't deal with them, so the group came to exactly the right place. Miss Harper rejoiced at this discovery and offered to quicken her pace, but suddenly Oliver noticed something. Sensing a lot of metal energy in the cave, Oliver decided to absorb it with the battle cauldron while Miss Harper, oblivious to this, was surprised at his sudden stop and asked if he was okay. The boy replied that everything was fine and that he was just excited to think about what treasures might be waiting for them ahead, so he suggested that they hurry up. At the next turn, a large cavern awaited them, but in this cave, a terrible giant monster was waiting for them. 
The beast looked like the demonic monster of destruction of legend, and both Miss Harper and Oliver were shocked by what they saw. The beast matched the descriptions of the rumors and legends, and Miss Harper suggested that they turn back immediately, as the monster was extremely dangerous, while Oliver wished to explore the cave while the beast slept. Miss Harper urged Oliver to leave the cave, for the monster was extremely powerful, and if it awakened, they would not escape their inevitable death, and the treasures would be useless if they were dead. In the cave, apart from the monster of destruction, they found only the damaged weapons of the cultivators and the claws of the demonic monsters, to which Oliver replied that he believed the treasure must be nearby, well hidden in the depths of the cave. Miss Harper replied that they were incredibly lucky that the monster was asleep and that they were still alive. Now they must return to the Alliance, report that they survived, and develop a new plan before risking it again. Oliver agreed to Miss Harper's request to return, and they carefully made their way back to their group. When Oliver and Miss Harper left the cave, a surprised Henry ran up to them, who did not expect them to return so quickly. The head of the Alliance informed Henry and the entire group that capturing the treasure would be an extremely difficult task. The cave is guarded by a demonic monster of destruction that they only knew from legends, and everyone was shocked to learn that this mythical beast actually existed. Oliver confirmed the truth of his words, noting that the monster had the characteristic features described in the legends. A mark on the forehead, scaly paws and horns on the head. Miss Harper emphasized that they should retreat immediately because the monster was extremely strong and they might be killed before they could find the treasures. And if they went back into the cave, no one knew if the monster would sleep. But Henry insisted that Oliver take measures and still go after the treasures, but the young man was inclined to refuse. However, suddenly Oliver noticed a poisonous bee and an idea arose in his head. Henry called loudly to Miss Harper, who was about to leave, with a request to listen to Oliver, who had a plan to defeat the monster of destruction. Henry convinced the woman to listen to Oliver's plan. Meanwhile, the young man was looking for something in the forest. The boy found a wild beehive with demonic bees and began to laugh, already imagining his next move. And Miss Harper, finding him, hoped that the young man was not just laughing out of hopelessness. Oliver enthusiastically began to share his ingenious plan to subdue the monster. They decided to use one monster against another, turning predators into tools of their victory. The key to their strategy is a hive of demonic bees that will become their secret weapon. Miss Harper, surprised by Oliver's ingenuity, already began to imagine how their plan would come to life. She expressed concern about the reliability of the plan, but Oliver, with unwavering confidence, continued to reveal the details, convinced of their success and safety. They planned to use the demonic bees as a means of delaying the destruction monster while it searched for food, for even the mightiest of monsters could not resist hunger, and the poisonous bees would be an unexpected obstacle for it. When the destruction monster leaves its cave, the Alliance will direct it to the bees, while the other team will take the moment to take all the valuables out of the cave, following the plan without any losses. Miss Harper appreciated this plan, but she was interested in who they would send for the treasures, and so Sophia put forward her candidacy. Oliver was surprised by Sophia's willingness to help, guessing her secret intentions for revenge. But the girl only smiled, claiming that she and Oliver were perfect for the mission. Sophia pressed her point, noting that she was second only to Miss Harper in strength, and Oliver was also considered one of the strongest in his group. Miss Harper, unaware of Sophia's cunning plans, agreed that Sophia and Oliver would go after the treasures, while she herself would take on the task of distracting the monster. Afterwards, Miss Harper returned to the camp and ordered the Alliance's strongest martial masters to wait at the entrance of the cave. And the next day, when the destruction monster was hungry, it came out of its shelter. Surveying his surroundings, he noticed a tasty snack in the form of Alliance members. So the first team prepared to distract the monster, while Oliver and Sophia prepared to enter the cave for the treasures. The members of the Alliance, using cunning and agility, distracted the monster of destruction by shouting at it and running around it from all sides. The monster, angered by such insolence, roared and menacingly rushed after the brave team. The ground trembled under his massive steps, and the trees around fell as if obeying his power. Like a storm, the monster destroyed everything in its path, impressive with its speed and strength. 
The monster was approaching the members of the Alliance, but they, gathering all their strength, accelerated and ran to Miss Harper, who was supposed to distract the beast. Meanwhile, Oliver and Sophia sneaked up to the cave, where Sophia stressed the need to hurry. Oliver agreed with her, but added with a sly smile that he was used to going it alone, so Sophia would have to work hard to catch up with him. Sophia, irritated by his prank, gave chase, but her speed was not enough to catch up with the boy. Oliver was sure that Sophia would not be able to catch him so quickly because the cave was huge and she would have to find him. Oliver quickly reached the monster's cave. Inside, the lair was full of various things, much more than when he and Miss Harper had been here last time, probably because the monster had hidden them underneath. Treasures were scattered everywhere, but the most valuable was a large accumulation of high-level monster essence, which Oliver, smiling, decided that he would take them all, not to share with anyone. Oliver carefully hid the five monster essences in his bag, deciding that he would keep the rest for the association, and continued his way deep into the cave. Delving deeper into the darkness, he came upon the skeleton of a martial artist who stood out among the others with his unique physique. An eerie energy emanated from the skeleton, and Oliver realized that this master had once been a great warrior of the Zudan Kingdom, and he was lucky to have something left of him. His armor shone with an unusual glow, so Oliver decided to take it, bowing to the master's skeleton and apologizing to him for it. A strange sword lay nearby, along with complex diagrams of combat development. Oliver thought about how to fairly divide these relics between the members of the Alliance and decided to keep the collection of equipment for joint study and the sword for himself. A sword that radiated powerful blood energy seemed extremely rare. When Oliver drew his sword from its scabbard, he could barely hold it in his hands due to its immense strength. After swinging his sword several times, Oliver realized that it was a real treasure that could change the fate of the battle. The young man decided to test the sword by pouring his spiritual energy into it. The sword began to vibrate with such force that a sense of its power shot through Oliver like lightning. Thanks to the sword, Oliver was able to punch a huge hole in the rock with one swing and the blade did not have a single scratch, which caused the young man admiration. He also carefully examined the equipment, which was of a surprisingly high level, and decided to hide it in a secret pit where it would not be found by prying eyes. Oliver continued his way deeper into the cave, determined to find out what else might be hiding in its dark recesses. Meanwhile, the society, gathering all its courage, fought with the monster of destruction, which was lured out of the cave. The members of the group, using dexterity and cunning, have captured the attention of the monster, and chasing them, the monster races through the forest. Miss Harper, feeling the ground shake under her feet, waited for the monster to approach. She saw the monster approaching and began to shake the hive of poisonous bees so that they flew out to meet the monster. Miss Harper threw the hive at the monster, and a swarm of bees flew out to meet it. Meanwhile, the team that lured the monster to the bees quickly ran away. The monster began to be stung by bees, and he, not finding a way to fight back, began to retreat. The members of the Alliance felt joy at the success of their plan, and now eagerly awaited good news from Oliver. Meanwhile, the young man continued his way through the cave, feeling the presence of some strange energy in front of him. Despite the unknown, he decided to find the source of this mysterious energy. Walking further through the cave, he saw a strange door carved right into the rock, the door looked extremely ancient and was difficult to open. Opening the door, Oliver saw a huge cave in which stood a strange house, and next to it grew a golden tree that radiated strange energy. The energy of the metallic element radiated from the golden tree, filling the cave with a mysterious glow. Another smaller monster of destruction appeared near the golden tree, and although Oliver was startled at first, he quickly realized that it was only a cub. Suddenly, Sophia whom he had left at the entrance to the cave, caught up with him and loudly warned him not to do that again. Oliver whispered to her not to scream as there was a small baby monster of destruction sleeping nearby, but Sophia assured her that it was still in the spraying stage and they shouldn't worry. But suddenly the girl screamed even louder when she saw what was right in front of her. This is the golden tree of the Renaissance, she exclaimed. Such trees were extremely rare. There were only a few of them in the entire world, and they contained a large amount of ki -e, allowing cultivation under them at twice the speed. But under the tree was an even more incredible thing. It was water from the golden spring. 
the golden water was far more effective than monster essences, and even one sip was enough to extend the life of an ordinary human by 100 years. Oliver was amazed at the value of this water, and Sophia loudly declared that they needed to collect it. However, not having containers with them, they couldn't do so, while Oliver came up with a good idea. The young man decided to swallow all the water if he could not take it away. After that, he ordered Sophia to leave this place, as he intended to take the tree with him. But if they make noise, the baby monster of destruction will definitely wake up, and it will become dangerous here. The girl left, saying that for the time being she would take the essences of the monsters lying in another cave. The golden tree was a priceless treasure, so uprooting it was very difficult. Oliver had to use all his spiritual energy to pull the tree out of the ground. Soon the young man, with all his efforts, managed to uproot the tree. But this action caused damage to the cave. As the cave began to collapse, the baby monster of destruction awoke, confused by what was happening. The young man turned to the monster with a smile. Well, kid, you woke up. It's time for you to run away from here, too. The monster, displeased with the fact that the young man destroyed his cave and sleep, angrily rushed after the thief. The boy was running fast, but he noticed that someone was running ahead of him. It was Sophia who still couldn't get out of the cave, because she didn't know the way as well as the boy. The boy shouted to Sophia to take the tree and get out of here immediately, while he would distract the monster. The girl was surprised by Oliver's decision to distract the monster and began to worry about him, but he insisted that she should not think about him and go away. The girl ran further, urging the young man to be careful. Oliver stopped in front of the monster to prevent it from pursuing further. The young man hoped that the baby monster of destruction was still too small and did not understand the situation like an ordinary cat or dog. All the boy had to do was anger the monster, and Oliver began to run around him, beckoning him to bite himself. The monster could not withstand such a challenge and attacked the young man. Oliver deftly dodged the blow, and the rivals faced each other, preparing for a difficult battle. The fight didn't let up. Oliver gracefully dodged every blow from the monster, like a dancer on stage. The monster turned out to be a worthy opponent, displaying a strength equal to that of Oliver. But suddenly, in the turn of the battle, the monster disappeared from the field of view, and so he, imperceptibly and slyly, found himself behind the boy. Oliver, sensing the presence of the enemy, attacked but only hit the air. It was an illusion. Another attack attempt, and again Oliver was wrong. The monster was unpredictable. Fortunately, Oliver had enough spiritual energy to defend himself, but he understood that he could not defend himself forever. He had to act. Using one of the essences of the monsters, the young man began to absorb its power. The power overwhelmed Oliver, and he was once again ready to attack. The young man had to finish the battle quickly so as not to lose the monster's precious spirit energy. Gathering all his strength, he rushed at the monster. The monster responded with an attack, a pillar of energy erupting from its mouth. Oliver, with incredible dexterity, defended himself from the blow and prepared for a counterattack. Using his strongest techniques, he attacked the monster ready to strike decisively. Oliver almost hit the monster, but it deftly dodged the blow. The monster disappeared into the darkness of the cave. And suddenly, like a ghost, he appeared again behind the boy, surrounded by his cunning illusions. The monster, gathering lightning energy, prepared for a decisive attack on Oliver. But Oliver, who had already seen these techniques and was able to resist them, identifying the real monster among the illusions. Behind the veil of deception, the boy discovered the real body of the monster and prepared to attack. The monster was also ready for battle. The blows of the opponents collided and the cave began to collapse from their force. The monster jumped back, feeling the force of Oliver's blow. The young man recognized that the monster was strong because he was able to get up after being hit, and the monster began to roar at him. But suddenly, realizing the danger, the monster ran away, leaving the cave, which collapsed. Oliver decided that it was time for him to leave the cave as well. Meanwhile, the association was eagerly waiting for the young man. Sophia had already reached the association, and Miss Harper assessed the pills collected in the cave, which were all saint level. The group thanked Miss Harper for her actions, and when Oliver arrived at the association, she thanked him, telling him that Sophia told him about his sacrifice so she could escape. The boy was surprised that Sophia did not tell anything about the water from the Golden Spring, because if someone found out about it, he would be in danger. Later that day, Oliver cultivated in a tub of hot water. He completed his training by reaching the fifth stage of condensation. 
This brought him great progress, although using the battle cauldron to fuse the essence of monsters still caused him pain. He wondered why he had never heard of such a cultivation method, and why he first received the attribute of earth, and now the attribute of gold. What is the secret of the boiler? What is the secret of the... A few days later, the boy who was still in the Full Moon Alliance camp looked exhausted after consuming the golden spring in the cave. Concerned, Miss Harper questioned Oliver about his pale appearance, to which Sophia interceded for him, claiming that he had contributed greatly to their cause. The girl insisted that when dividing the treasures, the greater part should go to Oliver because he did the lion's share of the work. The young man, although he doubted Sophia, heard her promise to keep his secret and not reveal it to anyone. Later, as he relaxed in the bath, Oliver contemplated the treasures he had received, ten condensation essences and two spray pills. Meanwhile, Isabel approached him, asking why he looked so pensive. The boy, mischievously, offered the girl to join him in the bath, to which she replied that he was a muddy and she was used to bathing alone. However, Isabel still climbed into the bath, dressed, which surprised Oliver. The guy tried to find out about the state of their relationship, but suddenly, Isabel became ill. The girl suddenly lost consciousness. Oliver was shocked and worried about Isabel, and when she opened her eyes, she didn't recognize him. While in the bath with a naked guy, she panicked. Oliver couldn't understand what had happened as he tried to bring Isabel to her senses. But the girl suddenly attacked the boy, as if she was trying to kill him. The guy managed to stop Isabel. Isabel, gathering energy, tried to hit Oliver while he asked her what happened to her. Confused, Oliver tried to figure out what had happened to Isabel when she smiled and said that the new name suited her, prompting the boy to shout angrily, Who are you? But suddenly, it came to him. You took possession of Isabel's body, transferring your soul to it. Realizing that she was exposed, the girl jumped away from Oliver. She confirmed his suspicions by stating that he was very intelligent and that his girlfriend was gone, and for his actions with her new body, she would kill him. Continuing, she said that she didn't expect her new body to be so weak. It must be the fate of all ordinary people. Oliver, ignoring her, screamed, demanding that Isabel's body be returned, or he would make her do it. The girl in Isabel's body reported that even at such a low level, she knows many mystical techniques and has the ability to move, so Oliver will not be able to overcome her. Gathering all his strength, Oliver tried to get the girl but she reminded him that it was still his girlfriend's body and he couldn't hurt her. The girl walked over to the open window, declaring that she would be back to get revenge for what he had done to her new body today. When Oliver asked where she was going, the girl replied that it was none of his business and disappeared. Oliver was in despair. Hatred for the stranger who had taken Isabel's body flooded him. He couldn't figure out if this was his fate as well and if his soul would also be taken away. Now he was certain that he had to become stronger, because strength decides everything, and then he could bring Isabel back. Meanwhile, Mia, daughter of Miss Harper, came to the boy, who heard a loud noise in his room. Mia, realizing that the boy was naked, let out a surprised cry. She was outraged, calling Oliver a dirty pervert, and loudly yelled at the entire alliance. Suddenly, they were approached by Miss Harper, who heard the noise, and discreetly asked Mia to be quieter. She also apologized to Oliver for the inconvenience. Miss Harper expressed her desire to discuss the treasures, noting that the golden tree was too valuable to leave unattended in the Alliance as it could be dangerous and risky, so she offered to auction it off. She thought it would be wiser to exchange the wood for combat skills, as golden wood could be equivalent in value to Saint Rank techniques. And Oliver realized that this was a smart decision, since most of her Alliance members practiced the water element. The guy agreed without arguing, and the woman added that they would go to the auction house tomorrow. Left alone, Oliver wondered about Isabel, where she was now, and what had happened to her. The next morning, the Alliance gathered in the main square, preparing to depart for Blue Eye City. But suddenly, someone interrupted the head of the Alliance. It was Lucas, who, despite still using his crutch, insisted on going with them, causing ridicule among his companions. He began to argue with the Alliance members, claiming that they had not accomplished much during the last mission. The Alliance members started whispering amongst themselves, commenting that Lucas was being defiant again, and it seemed that one lesson wasn't enough for him, believing that he had an inflated opinion of himself. The Alliance, with Oliver in the lead, marched towards the auction house, while Lucas, holding back his anger, watched them, believing that they should be punished for their audacity and insult. 
Miss Harper reassured Lucas, reminding him of his wounds and the need to rest while they, on their part, rushed to attend to urgent matters. After some time, something elusive began to flicker on the horizon, like a promise of adventure. The huge city was already looming before them. It seemed that it was waiting for their arrival. The walls of the city, high and impregnable, stood proudly, and the city itself, huge and powerful, was a hundred times larger than the one where Oliver had once grown up. Miss Harper, with impatience in her voice, urged everyone to quicken their pace. She revealed the plan of action, first to find shelter for the night, and then to go to the auction house. As he passed the busy streets, Oliver thought that it would be useful to find out the latest news, although he did not like the constant presence of Sophia, who was not far behind him. The auction house was already looming ahead, so Oliver and Miss Harper headed there without delay. It was an incredibly tall and impressive new building, inside which were stored priceless treasures that testified to the wealth and power of the place. They were looking around, fascinated by the variety of treasures when a young youth blocked their way. He informed them that in order to proceed further, it was necessary to put the goods up for auction, to have a valuable treasure and to confirm their identity, because such were the rules of this auction house. Oliver showed the boy the holy rank elixir of the water attribute, which instantly confirmed its high value and rarity. The boy let Oliver and Miss Harper go ahead, and going through the corridors of the auction house, the woman talked about its owners, a family that was the most influential in controlling the economic life of almost the entire state. Miss Harper suggested that they should not dwell on this and focus on the future, because the sale of the golden tree could make them extremely rich, allowing them to live in luxury and enjoy life, so they had to hurry.